with a bit of a nutrition background, it kind of came through the functional medicine world. Uh, and I uh, remain uh, supportive and active with the Institute for Functional Medicine. And if I were younger, I would pursue full certification, but instead I just read all the books. Um, it's interesting to contrast the Institute for Functional Medicine with the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, which is another, uh, which is another excellent organization. And, um, and, and I'm also uh, try to be an active member of the functional medicine group within the American Academy of Family Physicians. Uh, but it, I have this observation, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, and uh, 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 Chris Kresser has, a, has a, a statement that I like to use is when healthy nutrition people start arguing with each other, uh, big food wins. And what I'd love to hope that we can avoid through this group of like-minded people that want to use lifestyle is there's not a one size fits all. And... Um, and, and not let ourselves get hijacked in a certain direction. For example, the academies group is very oriented to the my plate uh, nutrition orientation. And, uh, and it's hard to get in a word uh, it different in that. Uh, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine by uh, uh, David Katz at Yale and, and his whole group is very latched on to a whole food plant-based diet as the yeah, as the best way to go and, and is, doesn't seem to be open to others. The Institute for Functional Medicine is more of a Mediterranean diet orientation. Um, uh, Mark Hyman, uh, one of my, the authors I read a lot, has a brand new book that's out right now called The Pegan Diet, a, a combination that he's been promoting of paleo and vegan. But what I hope we can do is share a lot of ideas and how we're using lifestyle medicine successfully. I started a business last July where I'm losing money like crazy because I've opened a direct primary care lifestyle consultation practice in Indian Wells. And, um, and you know, I thought I would be a lot busier than I am, uh, despite my reputation in the Coachella Valley and trying to market it more and more. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's a tough road to hold because people want, you know, their primary care physician to also prescribe all their drugs and manage all their diseases. And I do that in my practice, but at age 70, I was hoping to also have a lifestyle consultation practice that could be successful. And I'm, I'm not ready to give up on it, but it's a lot tougher job than I thought. Well, and um, I'll, I'll just close by, uh, I use my book, Lean and Fit, a lot because it tells my story. And, uh, and leanandfitlife.com is one of my uh, websites. But uh, I uh, am just excited that Larry had the idea and asked me to kind of take the lead here, at least in the beginning, to bring in lifestyle medicine oriented people. And so I'm going to turn it over to the rest of you, Larry, I'll let you coordinate the discussion for people to kind of give a synopsis of what they're doing. Okay. And just so everybody knows, we are recording this session because there's some people who couldn't be here for the initial session. We'll share it with them. Uh, I'm just going to follow along. Uh, uh, Zoom has its own magic way of assigning people to space. So I'm just going to, to go along, call your name, and if you could give a, a, a brief uh, introduction of who you are, where you are, and in your interest in lifestyle medicine. Nancy, I'm gonna to go to you uh, first. <clears throat> Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. I'm from, uh, I'm a third year family medicine resident at Eisenhower Medical Center. Uh, Dr. Sugar is one of my mentors and attendings. Um, and so, uh, to be honest, you know, I, clearly I'm just starting off as a, you know, starting independent practice and just through residency and seeing all the different modalities of treatment. Um, I just, I feel like in family medicine, we have such a, a distinct opportunity for preventative medicine. Um, and so in incorporating, you know, traditional things that you learn in residency, um, sprinkling in some lifestyle medicine and lifestyle changes has really just opened my eyes to what can be done outside of just med like you know 
typical medicine and typical treatments. So uh, when Dr. Sugar, you know, I was precepting with him the other day and he was telling me about this group and what, uh, you know, the goals are, I was like, yes, I want to learn more. I want to be a part of it. I want to start my career off having these, you know, conversations and being a part of, a, a, you know, similar like-minded people to kind of, you know, amplify my knowledge in that. So nice to meet everybody. <laughs> Nancy, Paul, I'll go to you next. Paul, you're muted. You're muted. There we go. Okay. Uh, I'm a family medicine doctor. I've been one for about 30 years now. And the, uh, uh, because I raised a family and I had a military career, uh, including four combat deployments, uh, I was always stressed and I was also uh, a sugar addict. And I would basically uh, eat sweets until I bloomed up to the maximum military weight. And then I would starve myself and run 40 to 50 miles a week and get back down so I could barely make the military uh, cut points. And finally, it got harder and harder to do. And, and finally, I was up over 300 pounds. And uh, um, I, I discovered, I read Gary Taub's book, uh, you know, why we get fat and what to do about it. And you know, and this was in 2009 or 2000, late 2009. And uh, basically I was at the end of my career. I managed to, over the next two or three years to explore various ways of eating <clears throat> and uh, all low carb and get my weight down by, you know, to about 180 and keep it there effortlessly. I, I uh, started uh, doing high intensity interval training I started doing intermittent fasting. I found Jason Fung. You know, I'm sure I could go on and, and all of you have, are aware of these things. And uh, so anyway, I actually retired in 2011. In 2018, I decided to come back and because I had no experience practicing all these things I had learned through reading all the books that you've talked about, in, including uh, Catherine's book. <laughs> and uh, the um, uh, so I... Uh, did all the things I had to do and you do never want to try to come out of retirement. Don't retire and try to come out. It's not worth it. Uh, it took me a year and a half. And uh, so now I have got my license back and I found a job in Texas uh, teaching at the Texoma Family Medicine Residency. It allows me to practice and also to do something I dearly love, which is teaching. And I'm trying to uh, do some research and write some papers and I also started a program at our clinic, uh, which is basically based on uh, you know, the Atkins diet and the Virta program. Uh, it's all online and it's called U-TUR, and I'll, I'll do, put that in the comments section, U-TURN.US, U-TURN.US. And the patients can come on, they can see a video of me explaining how to do a low carb diet, why you should do it, what it's like doing it, and how I can help you. And then if they're interested, there's actually a video uh, uh, that shows how to, you know, how to, the nuts and bolts of doing a low carbohydrate diet. Plus you can actually download the 17 page diet that I, which is basically like the new Atkins for a new you, you know, Eric Westman's diet. And uh, then there's a place down below where they can ask questions. And uh, when they, somebody, uh, it's basically WordPress blog, WordPress blog, and when they make a comment as a question on the that page, it, I get a notification and answer the question. So I've done that bilingually because I, I a long time ago got a degree in Spanish literature. So it's a bilingual English and Spanish, and um, you know I I'm just trying to to teach and uh, give back. I guess uh, I'm kind of like. Uh, you know, in, in any religion, the, the most active uh, proselytizers are always the converts. <laughs> so I'm kind of a, a convert from the uh, low fat, you know, uh, um, you know plant-based diet to, you know, I'm, I'm personally a carnivore, but I, I support all, anybody who is willing to give up sugar. I think sugar addiction is the biggest problem we face. Thank you very much, Paul. Jennifer Barron. Hi. Um, I'm the, in a small town um, in Shenandoah Valley, Virginia. I teach at a residency program. I've been here 22 years. I've always struggled with what we didn't get taught in med school. 
um, and kind of gravitated toward mind body and then lifestyle. I actually got my boards in lifestyle in 2017 through ACLM. I was a little frustrated that it was so their way or the highway. And I think that any group that says they have the answers doesn't. Um, so my goal is with patients trying to help them find their way, what fits for them. Cause I just don't, I think we just don't know it all. So trying to learn how to teach that to the residents so that they don't have to spend years and years. Can we distill it down to what the options are and what works for people? Um, so I'm excited to kind of see what we can put together. Jennifer, you're literally walking the talk. You're on a treadmill. Yeah. Yep, yep, because yeah. I've always struggled with my weight and if I don't do something to stay over on top of it. But yeah, my patients with, with telehealth, they have found it very entertaining. <laughs> so. Cool. so Warren Heffron. I have to uh, unmute myself here. I, um, I sort of got here uh, by mistake this morning, I guess in some ways, but decided to stay when I saw the list and some of the content. Uh, I thought originally I was signing up for a, a nutrition uh, a session on uh, the use of protein, um, uh, protein and nutrition, and I uh, signed up for it. And then when I kept getting information, it sounded like it was just a group getting together and, and uh, starting some new thoughts. Uh, so I decided to stay and see what, uh, uh, what, what this concept was about. I'd seen several definitions uh, of, um, uh, of, of lifestyle medicine. And fortunately, Joe uh, laid it out for us in the first, first sentence, so I feel like I at least now know where we are. I've been at the University of New Mexico for 52 years, and I've had a career here. I'm pretty well retired now, still part-time emeritus. Um, and my real passion is spreading uh, uh, the international uh, uh, global health uh, family medicine to developing uh, low and middle income uh, or low resource countries. Uh, still active in doing a lot of that and been doing some consulting and those sort of things. So that's, that's where I am, thanks. Thank you, Warren. Michael Kalinowski. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Kalinowski. I'm a family physician, I suspect like many of you here. Um, I'm out in Middletown, Connecticut. Um, and uh, you know, my career has kind of been going through a couple different phases. So I spent the first chapter of my career in busy private practice, outpatient family medicine, and then a few years ago decided to make a transition. And now for the past few years, I've been teaching with the Middlesex Health Family Medicine Residency Program in Middletown, um, which has been a great joy and a great experience. Um, been a member of the ACLM for the last couple of years, and this past November sat for my boards, and now I'm board certified in lifestyle medicine. Um, and uh, we're working in Middletown um, to kind of develop a concept and, and really start developing lifestyle medicine clinical services within the residency practices. Um, and hopefully I'll be gearing that up this summer. And then I'm very interested in finding ways to kind of gradually build a teaching of the discipline with the residents. Um, Middlesex is one of the four-year uh, four -year family medicine programs and we're interested potentially in developing a fourth year specialty tract and then maybe seeing if we can follow this trajectory to become a lifestyle medicine residency program at some point in the future. Um, also really interested in, in community medicine and the concept of health environments and you know how our, how our environments powerfully influence our ability to succeed or not with our lifestyle goals. Um, and I've been working on a number of initiatives related to that concept, but uh, it's really nice to meet everyone and I look forward to getting to know everyone better. Thank you, Catherine Shanahan. Um, hi, uh, so I'm a family medicine doctor and in 2001, I had a major health crisis and uh, lived in Hawaii and just completely changed the way I thought about nutrition and health. And what I've been seeking is actually um, uh, what, what are like the commonalities. And I think even though while not, there is no like one size fits all good, as far as bad, we know there's certain things that are bad for everyone. And that's where I've been really focusing. Um, you know, and those two things are the seed oils, uh, which are, if you haven't heard of that before, it's the corn and soy and canola um, <coughs> and, uh, and process and refined carbohydrates. So that's 66% of most of the average American's diet, leaving only 33% for actual food. So whether you're a vegan or a carnivore, um, if you're getting real food and avoiding those things, I think you're really, you know, made a big, big step forward. 
Um, and I, I honestly don't know. I was like, I was like, is lifestyle medicine really a good even fit for me? Because I feel like th- what I want to work on somehow is the fact that there's, we're in the midst of really, it's a true crisis with the, with the seed oil business. We've got an entire industry of people working in the edible oil industry who are warning um, or who know that these oils are so damaging. They contain, uh, when you cook with them, you're basically eating toxic compounds that exceed like certain thresholds by a thousand times. It's insanity. It's really a crisis. And yet doctors don't know about it. Um, and it's a third of people's diet. I mean, that is a crisis to me. We're eating known toxins. There's no denying it's not theoretical and doctors don't even know that this is, uh, an issue or they, they don't even know what they are. And to, to me, like that is a big barrier because like we've said, or, or like I started out, maybe what's right for different people isn't all the same, but what's wrong for us, no human is gonna live well underwater, right? <laughs> Smoking really isn't good for anyone. Um, neither are these seed oils. And I think that is, since it's a third of our diet, it's, it's a crisis. We're at a crisis right now, especially with the coronavirus and I could go on and on. So I'm going to cut myself short here, but, um, but just what I'm actually doing during the day is working with people who are employees who have, you know, have to decide if they, what, what to do for their coronavirus symptoms. And then also I take care of their metabolic health. So I have uh, a, a real nice um, position because I don't have to do insurance company notes. Um, and this is like the ultimate form of direct primary care. I know there's kind of some connections to that industry here. Um, if you can get a company to hire you as the doctor to do metabolic health, disease reversal, whatever you want to call it, um, you're, it's just so rewarding. You're going to love it. <laughs> Catherine, I just want to say you definitely belong here. You're an activist. And, uh, and, and you know, we very often we have to fall back on the old starfish analogy where we're, we're like the little boy throwing starfish back into the sea when there are thousands of them around us dying. And, and, and there's no question that, that the toxicity of our food and our environment is getting worse every year. And, uh, you know, many, you know, you, you can choose to, you know, act in your own practice. You can act locally in your community and you can act uh, more broadly through writing and speaking, which is what you do a lot. But you're a, you're a family medicine hero, in my opinion. And while you're an activist, it, it mainly in what you do, but you're also doing health work in a local environment. You you definitely belong here. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank I you, like Joe. It. So Tiffany Ho, we're going to move to you next. Hi, everyone. I'm Tiffany Ho. I'm a I'm on faculty at University of Utah in Salt Lake City in the Department of Family Medicine. And we actually just started, we're about to launch like a lifestyle medicine consult group. It's multidisciplinary within family medicine, internal medicine, physical therapy, um, dietitians, kind of all through these different departments. And I think right now we're still trying to figure out how, especially as primary care providers, what information we'll be providing to patients And so I think it's always just kind of nice to see like what is going on across the country and other tips, tricks, ideas that we can bring back here and be able to share with my colleagues here. Lena Sayez. Hello. Hi. Very happy to be in this group. Um, So my journey to lifestyle medicine started with meeting Kate Chinahan. (laughs) Hi, Kate. Um, I was, uh, working in New Hampshire and the same hospital that Kate was working. And I thought that I kind of knew about nutrition, but she obviously was an expert. So I asked her to teach me, learned her, read her book. Um, and then she took me to a few conferences where she was speaking, uh, including Ancestral Hall Symposium, where I met many people who are, um, uh, doing research uh, on ancestral health principles and um, kind of broader aspect of health. Um, and then Kate and I, we actually co-founded an organization that's called Physician of uh, Ancestral Health. And I, I used to be a president of that organization and that's how I met Mark Kuzella. <laughs> and then uh, Mark Kuzella, 
me and Rob O co-founded the American Academy of Family Physicians uh, Lifestyle Medicine Member Interest Group. That was in 2016. Um, so I got board certified in lifestyle medicine in uh, 2018. Um, I am a officer of the lifestyle medicine member interest group for the like since its origin. Um, one thing that frustrates me with the book and where I hope I can get help of this um, from this group is there is a lot of. Um, plant-based um, handouts, plant-based philosophy that's posted in the group. And I agree with the other speakers that were saying there is um, much more than one size fits all. And we need to be focusing on um, kind of common principles of what's good for health, what's bad for health, and uh, have less argument arguments about like, it's my way or the highway, you know, there is only one sort of um, dogma, which I disagree with. So I hope that um, like people who are in this call and um, whatever it develops going forward will be able to contribute other points of view to the mix so that the whole academy is exposed to greater materials. And as a, um, like I'm working right now with an academy on developing some uh, framework for lifestyle medicine. So there will be more education for the family medicine doctors. Um, and I hope to make it um, more diverse. So thank you. So I'm going to say this to, to the group. Thank you very much, uh, Polina. Um, it's now uh, just a, getting very close to 1230. We only have another 30 minutes. So we really need to move uh, through uh, as quickly as possible. So with that, uh, Carolyn Richardson, I'll put you on the hotspot. Hi, I'm in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I'm the Associate Chair for Research at the Department of Family Medicine here uh, at, at the University of Michigan. I've been for about 25 years. Uh, 15 of those years, I was also uh, working in the VA and directing the Quality Enhancement Research Initiative for Diabetes for the VA nationally. Um, I'm a diabetes researcher, mostly uh, started with diabetes prevention, now doing more type 2 diabetes research. Um, we just published an article in JMIR Diabetes about using CGM and low-carb diet coaching for diabetes prevention. We just, with Laura Saslow as the PI, just got a R01 funded by NIH on low-carb diets and diabetes prevention, which is very exciting since NIH isn't all that happy about funding low-carb stuff. So that's a big deal for us. Uh, I'm also the lead on a statewide quality improvement initiative for diabetes care and prevention in Michigan. Um, and our goal is to reverse and prevent type two diabetes, not just to manage it. Um, so that's moving forward. I'm editor in chief of Annals of Family Medicine. So if any of you have any low carbohydrate diet manuscripts on original research that you want to get published. You'll have a, a friendly face at the and the editor's team in Annals of Family Medicine and also editor-in-chief of JMIR Diabetes, which is Journal of Medical Internet Research. So if it's related to the internet and diabetes, that's a good place for, uh, for some of your early research, pilot studies, etc. Um, I joined this group partly because I'm interested in what we're doing in family medicine to change things in the future. I, I, I don't think our residents are getting taught what they need to know to do a better job of, of helping patients prevent and, and reverse type two diabetes right now. And uh, I'd like to see that change. Thank you very much, Don Carolyn, Bexton. I am thrilled by your comments, Carolyn, and I'm thrilled that the Annals of Family Medicine will, will be receptive to this. You know, I've I've had a manuscript called Functional Medicine and Family Medicine that got rejected by every uh, journal. You know, Kurt Stange knows me well. I knew him as a student, but I've been working to try to get uh, some things published. And I'm just thrilled that you're, you're moving in this direction or you're open to it. Now, I wanna tell just a quick aside, uh, I, by, by accident more than uh, earning it, I got uh, elected to the National Academy of Medicine, the former IOM, way back in, in 1992. 
but I love going to their annual meetings and they have a nutrition section at the National Academy of Medicine. And I went and attended it. And, uh, and all these, these individuals who are at nutrition centers around the country that are considered the number ones in their field were presenting their, their work and their research. And I raised my hand and said, uh, well, what about sugar? And uh, they looked at me and said, oh, all this attention to sugar is just a fad. And, um, and I, I, sat, I just sat there absolutely dumbfounded that they, they do not accept the low carb science at all. And uh, uh, it's just shocking so what, what goes on at that highest level. So again, I'm thrilled that the animals is open to this direction. Don Baxted. Hi, everybody. Don Baxted here. I'm the program director of the Family Medicine Residency at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center's Altoona program. And we are in the process of trying to implement lifestyle medicine more into our residency program, kind of in a dual track. We're going to have a, a curriculum that's going to go to all of the residents, and we're also going to hopefully offer a board certification track within the program. And we actually are doing our own little mini collaborative through the University of Pittsburgh. A few of the folks that just trickled in from another meeting are going to be speaking forward and about this in a few minutes. But anyway, we're pretty excited about integrating all this stuff and happy to be on board with the FMEC also. Deborah Gordon. I think I get to be a, maybe the emeritus member here. I've been practicing family practice for over 40 years. And when I finished medical school, I wish there'd been some attention to diet and lifestyle and preventive medicine, but there hasn't been. So I'd say I'm largely self-taught that took an accelerated pace with Gary Tobbs, Weston Price, Kate Shanahan, I do ask every patient what the oils are in their kitchen, and most recently Dale Bredesen, and I'm just wrapping up um, a clinical trial we did with 25 participants um, reversing cognitive decline in nine months with diet and lifestyle medicine. And what I'd really like to do is approach that with a two-tiered approach, and family docs are the perfect recipients to learn the first tier, which is all diet and lifestyle. And if that doesn't work, we need to investigate Lyme disease and mold toxicity and things that a typical family doc doesn't have the bandwidth to add to their um, approach. But we're hoping to get that published in the next few months. And I'm hoping to work with Paulina and some others locally to do our next research project more in a um, indigent or community-based clinic setting, at least for the diet and lifestyle part of it. Thank you. Nicholas Pennings. Hi, Nick Pennings. I'm uh, chair of family medicine at the Campbell University School of Osteopathic Medicine, which is uh, about 30 miles south of Raleigh. And I've been able to incorporate uh, nutrition and obesity education into the curriculum here, which has been very nice. I'm also Executive uh, Director of Clinical Education at the Obesity Medicine Association. And there I helped to put together the content for the conferences. And one of the things I like about the obesity medicine is that I take a four prong approach, one of which is nutrition. And it's, it's really open recognizing that the individual response to nutritional interventions varies. So there is no one size fits all. Uh, physical activity, behavioral therapy and medications um, but also I have developed an online rotation for medical students and residents to do an obesity medicine through the OMA, which uh, has, it gives them a great opportunity to learn uh, about the, some of the key aspects of nutrition, uh, physical activity, behavioral therapy, and use of medications, and just getting a better understanding of what causes obesity and, and how to effectively treat it. Thank you very much. Mark Kukazella. Yeah, thank you, Larry. It's such a privilege to be on this call. So I'll keep it brief. But Larry and I, we go way back for from Dayton days. And my story similar to many on this call that, you know, I thought I kind of, I thought I knew what I knew, but didn't know what I didn't know. And then I ended up with uh, LADA in about 2012, at the same time working with the military on obesity. And it made me rethink everything in my own life and my patient's life. And have brought all that back to West Virginia, where we're the number one obese and diabetic state in the country. Um, 
I've worked with so many of you on this uh, on this call already on different projects, just trying to figure out the science and then how to get patients to adhere to change. You know, so we feed kids 200 grams of processed carbohydrates for free breakfast and lunch, and yet we expect some impact <laughs> on the obesity world. Um, I'm pretty uh, deep into policy and advocacy, you know, uh, in the Nutrition Coalition, Low Carb Action Network, Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners, because I think if we get the science right first, then we can go after policy. So I appreciate this group and um, in getting the science right. And, I, you know, I, I, at one, one size doesn't fit all. And I actually left the AAFP interest group that Paulina, I, and Rob had started because I was actually being attacked by people that had a belief system. And I would just try to respectfully share articles in a safe space to get us to think. And I was actually called Trumpish on that thread. And um, so I just left, I, I was like, I'm, I'm done with, with that group. So I hope that we can have friendly conversations. And I've been brought into debate, vegetarian cardiologists. And at the end of the day, we agree on 90% of everything. People want us to like fight each other, but we don't. <laughs> you know, it's actually that the, it's so much perception. Yeah, so you know, I'm more on the carnivorous end because my C peptide is 0.3. So if I have fruit, my sugar goes to 200. You know, I have we're, we have a research study going on now with the CGMs, similar to Caroline's. So we want to see behavior change and what technology can do to impact behavior change and let each each patient see what affects their blood sugar. But I'll, I'll stop there. But again, that's, this is good, just meeting everybody. I want to give a shout out to Mark's book, Run For Your Life, too. Uh, he, he has uh, won more uh, long distance races than most of us have ever done. Great guy. Bill Landry's. Hey everybody, I'm Jill Andrus. I'm um, on faculty at the University of Iowa in Iowa City. Uh, spent most of my career so far as the director of medical student education in our department and am kind of making a career transition right now. I'm working on a master's degree in clinical nutrition at the University of Wisconsin and um, hoping to use that to help uh, address the gap in medical school curriculum uh, in nutrition training. Uh, in addition to working in, on incorporating some of this into our uh, patient care and clinical offerings at the University of Iowa, and really um, want to emphasize the importance of um, size inclusivity and health at every size in uh, a lot of our discussions in lifestyle medicine. I think um, sometimes there's an overemphasis on um, specific body types um, that may not always be warranted and that um, excludes a lot of our patients and we need to be mindful of uh, how we can include them and empower them to make healthy changes. Very much, Megan Gregor. Hello everyone, it's wonderful to see all of you. Um, I'm Megan Grega. I'm a family doc. I'm also board certified in lifestyle medicine having uh, sat for the exam in 2017, just like Jennifer. So I guess we were all in that tent together. That was awesome. Uh, I am uh, a fellow of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine and I serve on several national task force that are dedicated to how do we implement lifestyle medicine, including a reimbursement task force, a clinical practice model working group and a national quality measure task force about how do our current quality measures impact the way value-based contracts look at lifestyle medicine approaches. Uh, I've been interested in lifestyle medicine for about the last 20 years, even though they weren't really calling it back then, calling it lifestyle medicine. Uh, and I am the co-founder and chief medical officer for something called Kellen Foundation, which is a 501c3 nonprofit here in the Lehigh Valley of Pennsylvania. And our goal is to take lifestyle medicine out into the community trying to make the healthy choice the easy choice. Somebody had mentioned about social norms and choice architecture and everything by uh, what we call our healthy neighborhood immersion strategy. And that has to do with uh, working with elementary school students, school gardens, community gardens, healthy cooking classes out in community locations and uh, providing access to nutrient dense foods through the Eat Real Food mobile market as well as uh, intensive therapeutic lifestyle change programs. So last year we saw over 10,000 students and we actually sold over 80,000 pounds of nutrient dense produce like fresh produce, whole grains and our lifestyle medicine meals out in these neighborhoods. Additionally, I am honored to be uh, helping to mentor some of the lifestyle medicine people of the future. 
through being adjunct faculty at St. Luke's uh, University Health Network Anderson campus with our awesome assistant program director, Andy Goodbread, who will be talking in a little bit. Uh, and I am tasked with actually uh, in integrating the lifestyle medicine residency curriculum for both our family medicine residents and our internal medicine residents so that they will be eligible to sit for the American Board of Lifestyle Medicine upon graduation. Uh, additionally, I'm an assistant clinical professor for the Temple Lewis Katz of School of Medicine and St. Luke's uh, Medical School, and I'm the faculty advisor for our student lifestyle medicine interest group. I run our lifestyle medicine uh, rotations for both medical students and for residents, both for our hospital and for people across the country. And I'm a preceptor for uh, registered dietitians out in the community program and some masters of public health students. So education is a big thing that I love to be involved in. And I would just echo what most of us have said is that I think more unites us than divides us and helping the doctors of the future learn how to use lifestyle to prevent and treat disease is the most important thing. So thank you for inviting me to this meeting. Thank you, Megan. Andy, good bread. Andy, your sound is not working. So Andy, uh, as you fix that, I'm going to, I'll come back to you, but Darwin Dean. Hi, Larry, nice to see you. I have to say, uh, this is an incredible breadth of experience and, um, and great activity. Um, I made the mistake of speaking at the ACLM meeting at Harvard a couple of years ago and didn't give my backstory. So I'm gonna take a minute to tell you what I'm doing here. Um, when I was a teenager, I developed headaches and abdominal pains and sought out medical care at a number of different doctors, got shunted around from specialist to specialist, uh, got into college, took my first nutrition course as a senior and learned about lactose intolerance. And no doctor had ever asked me about a diet history. So I decided that I was gonna get a master's degree in nutrition and go to medical school to teach nutrition to doctors. And I've had a career of doing that. Um, I've co-edited a couple of books and um, currently teach undergraduate medical students. I am blessed to work in a seven year BSMD program. So um, I actually teach college sophomores and juniors we have a lifestyle medicine course that runs for two semesters for a year. And then the second two semesters is health coaching. Um, so my, you know, we only have about 70 graduates a year, but all of them are getting a firm foundation in not only what to do, but how to do it. The lifestyle medicine course is based on a textbook written by Greg, Craig Hassid who's a senior lecturer at Monash University in um, the island off Australia in New South Wales. Um, I, when, I was about to, when I was designing the course, I was at a nutrition conference, nutrition education conference in Cambridge, England. And one of the women said, oh, we've had that course for years. And I thought I was doing something brand new. Um, so there's nothing new under the sun. Um, when I first started teaching, the challenge was there was very little published data, number one, and in, in reputable journals. And number two, um, there were the, what, no matter what we taught in the first two years of medical school, the students got into their third year, they didn't see any doctors talking about nutrition. And so they graduated knowing nothing. So my first job was a faculty development program to train some preceptors. And I'm sure that you know many of you who've been around as long as Joe and I have, have been through this kind of cycle, right? Where do you start intervening because you need a lever and a place to stand in order to move the earth? And I, I have to say, I'm, I'm so impressed by all of the work that so many of you are doing and really happy to see that there are a lot of people doing a lot of different things because I think eventually we will move the needle. Thank you, Darwin. John Long. Yeah, thanks. I uh, just really honored to be here. Um, I my own personal health journey kind of changed me from, you know, uh, preaching and lecturing the same old uh, low fat message that we all learned in medical school. Um, and after getting healthy, you know, just just on a, 
a newfound mission to learn as much as I can. Um, I feel like a bit of a fanboy here, you know, deep nutrition, you know, introduced me idea along with a big fat surprise about how, you know, healthy and unhealthy oil is a concept that, you know, again, to, to realize recommending uh, industrial oils to lower my LDL is about like telling people to smoke, to lose weight. It just, you know, um, I, 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 just want to echo what Mark has said, teaching full-time family medicine, inpatient, outpatient, and trying to figure out how to provide knowledge for my residents that I didn't have back then is, uh, it's really an honor to be here. To hear people from, you know, the spectrum from carnivore to, uh, you know, Lola lifestyle medicine, you know, plant-based, it just, again, we agree on so much and I, I don't want to see us in the future like, uh, uh, you know, Atkins and uh, uh, oh, what's his name? You know, those debates back in the 80s where they yelled and made fun of each other and people just got sicker. You know, if we can find some common ground on getting rid of processed food and, uh, uh, you know, getting healthy, there's just there's not a chronic disease in our modern society that can't be improved. With, with, with changing that, whether it's carnivore or omnivore or plant-based or a million different ways for, for what ails people. So thanks for uh, letting me join in. If Andy, can we come back to you? Nope, the sound's not working. Uh, how about now? Oh, there you go. All right, nice. Uh, Andy Goodbread, so I'm a family doc. Uh, lifestyle medicine certified in 2019. Uh, as, as Megan alluded to, I'm also the associate director for our St. Luke's Family Medicine Residency out of our Anderson campus, and that's in the Lehigh Valley region of Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, I'm very excited to be a part of this group because I think it lets us take what we've started to do in implementing the lifestyle medicine residency curriculum with our now 18 month old residency program. Uh, bring some of those lessons learned to other programs that are hoping to do something similar, but then also take a really fruitful discussion that this group will have back to some of the discussions we have with our residents who come in with different educational backgrounds, different nutrition, physical activity backgrounds, so that we can be having not just dogmatic discussions with them, but really well-rounded discussions that will hopefully highlight the commonalities and not the things that uh, that separate us. And that, you know, my, my, my personal, if I had to pick a passion within lifestyle medicine, it's the uh, the, the pertinence of lifestyle medicine to sports, sports performance. Uh, so I'm the, a team and school physician for one of our local school districts and having the opportunity to roll this out, not just as a, uh, a chronic disease reversal and prevention, but also for, for peer performance is something that I get excited about. So very excited to be a part of this group. Catherine Fega. Hi, thanks for having me today. I um, appreciate uh, the connection with this community. Um, I came, uh, I'm an associate program director and uh, director of osteopathic education at a brand new uh, family medicine residency in, in quote unquote Western Maryland, a little bit more central, but um, uh, I met, uh, well, I came to medicine um, from really from an integrative medicine pathway. So I actually, um, you know, that's how I was introduced to osteopathic medicine. So I have a lot of experience in homeopathy and um, shamanism and all kinds of different things. Um, and then, um, I uh, did the Integrated Medicine and Residency Program um, at Maine Dartmouth and then um, came down and started working with Mark Cazella actually at WVU, which was a wonderful experience. And, you know, through that, through him, I actually started investigating low carbohydrate uh, treatment for reversing diabetes and, you know, was able to correct a health problem that I had for 20 years that was unable to be diagnosed. And ultimately, it was really just mild prediabetes. But um, realized that, you know, a vegan diet, which I had had for 12 years, really exacerbated that problem. And then also, um, you know, vegetarianism for 20 years. And that, that was, you know, I, I think it was, you know, helpful for me to experience that personally, but um, in time enough for my second baby too. So I do full spectrum family medicine and non-operative OB. And um, I think that's one of the things that I'm really interested in specifically, which is, um, you know, influencing, you um, uh, women of childbearing age and actually, you know, is looking at the impact that, that, you know, the epigenetic impact that we can have through utilization of nutrition in the um, preconception and conception and um, uh, perinatal period. 
I um, have been through the integrated medicine pathway. So I was integrated medicine board in 2016 and, um, and then uh, worked at the metabolic center that Mark um, has. I was one of the sort of offsite uh, faculty for that and had an opportunity to come start a brand new program um, uh, a couple uh, 18 months ago. So, <laughs> so I'm in the same boat there. Um, and uh, uh, it was great. So we have a required nutrition rotation. It's a two week rotation in the second year, PGY two year. Um, and really, you know, my goal is to just bring in these really, really quality, quality osteopathic physicians in particular. We're obviously about half MD, half DO. But, um, uh, you know, I think I, I found myself not really challenged as a, a DO. Uh, there's not enough, there wasn't enough, I think, out there. And so um, I want to see that challenge um, placed at the, the feet of our residents. I think that we can. Um, and then from a biochemical standpoint, really starting to understand a lot more of the biochemistry um, and really challenging the dogma that, you know, some of our residents come in with this dogma and it can be really difficult to, um, to breach. And others are just like, pick it right up and they get it. And, um, but really I'd like to, maybe see this group challenged in family medicine residencies in general, um, because we have um, an ability to pot uh, you know, potentize uh, the activism in our communities, but um, I don't think we have enough um, uh, you know, breadth of uh, racial uh, um, background and, and, dif and diversity. And I think that those are some of those populations need it the most. So um, I would really like to help to cultivate that in the future. Um, and then also I'm in the process of um, fighting <laughs> environmental activism, um, some research for a, basically a hazardous waste incinerator that's going in um, within two miles of 30% of the public school population within the county in which I live. And so um, we're getting some baseline heavy metals testing um, to look at those baselines. And, and maybe, you know, if we do see a difference, which we may not, um, but uh, if we do see a difference, maybe get lifetime um, health screening, at least for these kids. Um, because that's a, that's a, the environmental impact um, from, uh, you know, particulate matter 2.5 and all that stuff is, is really pretty interesting to me too. So um, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and I appreciate the opportunity. Elizabeth Anderson. Hi, I'm a family medicine doctor, associate director of the family medicine residency program in Williamsport, part of the UPMC group that is going to be starting the lifestyle medicine residency curriculum here. And hopefully Andy and Megan, you'll be able to help us along those that, that way. So um, I'll keep it brief so you can get to everybody else. Thank you very also, much. Yeah, I am board certified in um, lifestyle medicine. Janice Schifarelli. That's good timing because I'm from Williamsport uh, as well. Um, I'm thoroughly impressed by everyone's backgrounds and, and research, et cetera, but um, I'm kind of an educator through and through. Uh, when people ask me what I do, I always tell them that I, I'm a teacher first and a doctor second. Um, and working in a more rural community, um, we don't have any leadership in uh, nutrition or exercise here. So um, I took it upon myself to get certified in both obesity medicine and lifestyle medicine. Um, and Dr. Anderson and I are going to be implementing the lifestyle medicine residency curriculum here starting in July. So we're very excited about that. Um, I have some particular interests in trying to get into medical schools to ensure that um, there is some education for nutrition and exercise as, you know, these, uh, these students come up to become residents. I feel like there needs to be some time and effort put there. So I don't know if there's any advocacy going on for that. Um, and then I just have a special place in my heart for trying to get school lunches changed. Um, that's something that, you know, really, really bothers me. So I see Megan, you know, <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm just looking forward to um, networking with you guys. I feel like um, Dr. Anderson and I are very isolated out here. We're not attached to tertiary care centers. And uh, um, I'm, in, I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of opportunities we have to be able to network together to make a difference. Very much. Megan Maurer. Hi there, I'm Megan Maurer. I'm a faculty at uh, UPMC Altoona Family Physicians. I uh, work with Don Bexta, whom you already met. And um, I've been interested in lifestyle medicine for a long time, though I'm just newly board certified this past fall. Um, and we're, I'm part of the UPMC collaborative to get the uh, lifestyle medicine residency curriculum started at our site. Um, as far as interests, I really like culinary medicine and helping people learn how to cook healthful, healthful, healthful meals. And um, 
I would love to get involved with the whole uh, school lunches thing as well. I have uh, four children and I really uh, am appalled at some of the menus that uh, my kids come home with for their school lunches. Um, so I hope that we can be a part of that as well. Thanks. Thank you. Lindsay Nakashi. Hi, I'll keep the UPMC train going. Also Family Medicine UPMC at Shadyside, which is in um, the east end of Pittsburgh. I work with Dr. Alyssa Cohen, who's on this call as well, part of getting things rolled out for our residency programs. Um, it's cool to be on this call because I attended uh, Megan's small group at the conference on reimbursement. And then I'm a WVU grad. Um, so it's nice to see Mark on this call. It's really nice that we're all connecting this way. Um, I'm specifically interested in uh, where we intersect with inclusion and health equity. Um, and then also climate and lifestyle medicine. I'm also board certified. Thank you. Lisa uh, Cohen. Hi, as Lindsay just uh, said, I'm also part of the UPMC collaborative as well. And I'm at uh, UPMC Shadyside uh, in Pittsburgh. And we are planning on rolling out the uh, lifestyle medicine residency curriculum in July. I am board certified just recently um, in 2020, um, and I'm a DO, so really interested in kind of all the non-pharmacologic options to our patients as far as um, I do continue to do OMT and adding the addition of um, being able to um, teach lifestyle medicine, especially um, the um, cooking and healthful eating part um, to our patients, hopefully um, for our future as well as ourselves. So thank you. I really enjoy listening to everyone's stories and have the opportunity to be part of this group. Last but not least, Jonathan Gebison. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Jonathan. I, uh, I'm on faculty at University of Michigan. Uh, although personally, lifestyle medicine hasn't been new to me per se, as, as, as a form of medicine, it's kind of new to me. I just sat for my uh, obesity boards yesterday. Um, and I'm interested in bringing this to our residency and to our residency education program. Um, at least these ideas, I know that there's some people within my institution that are also interested in it. I think Caroline Richardson is there. Uh, and a couple other people. So I, I, I'm new to this and I'm, I'm excited to learn from you all. Thank you. I think everyone has now had an opportunity. Am I correct? Is there anyone that I've missed? Okay, since everybody's muted, I guess you couldn't say at any rate. Uh, thank you. So we're, we're running out of time. It's almost one minute now to one Eastern. And so what I'd like to do is suggest, this is a beginning. Um, there will be a lot more people, I think, who will, who will come to this over time. And what I'd like to suggest as a first step, uh, number one, as I heard some, some major themes that I think there may be interest where there's groups wanting to collaborate. One around the uh, curriculum, both at the medical student level and at the residency program level. How to get patients to adhere is another theme. Going into the community. I heard uh, self-learning. There's a lot of uh, uh, people who are, are reading, writing, and um, in, in developing their, their knowledge and skill in this area. And um, so what I'd like to suggest, uh, because we're not going to have an opportunity for an in-depth discussion today, is we will create essentially a listserv, which is a group email and we will send it out to everybody and ask you just a basic question. You know, describe your basic interest in the kind of things you might be interested in collaborating with on others. What really impresses me about this group is the diversity. Um, well, at one level, diversity. Um, diversity in parts of the country, uh, and diversity in, in your interests. I think somebody pointed out um, that there are not uh, a lot of people of color. Uh, which I, looks pretty true to me as I look on things. So we may build this over time and reach out to colleagues who would have an interest in, in coming together. The other thing I would suggest to you is we use our annual meeting, which will be October 8th through 10th. It will be in Pittsburgh this year. We, our goal is to have a hybrid meeting. 
We may be the first meeting in family medicine to have face-to-face -face once again, uh, we are hoping. Uh, so I would highly recommend that you consider submitting a workshop, a seminar, a research presentation, a paper, poster presentation to the meeting. Now, the, the bad news is the deadline, which has been established for quite some time, is actually this weekend. So if you want to put something in, uh, that would be uh, very well received. And if you want to communicate with me about that, if you're not familiar with our meeting, uh, I'm certainly thinking the UPMC system and the folks out in uh, St. Luke's in the eastern part of the state should be thinking about using the meeting to move your, your uh, work forward. Um, so, Joe, I'm going to turn things over to you. That's that's my best sense yeah. of, of what we can do right now. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm blown away by the talent and experience of this group, very humbled by it also. You know, it, it appropriately so, most of the discussion focused on nutrition, and it's estimated that nutrition is probably the 80% factor when it comes to healthy lifestyle. I, I just want to end a comment because as we form this listserv and talk about it, I, I uh, use six pillars uh, besides nutrition. Uh, physical activity is important, and I'm a geriatrician these days, so strength and balance along with movement are critical. Uh, you know, stress reduction, uh, restorative sleep. We could do a whole discussion on getting people off of sleeping pills and uh, learning how to sleep well again. Uh, social connectedness, uh, uh, getting rid of any loneliness or isolation is vitally important. And finally, uh, having meaning and purpose in your life. I, those are, in my mind, the six pillars. Others kind of slice and dice it in different ways. The blue zones have their power nine uh, things, for example. But uh, we'll, I, you know, this group should be in dialogue continuously now, uh, meeting together, or, you know, this way or in person once in a while. Uh, but I'm thrilled that you're going to focus FMEC this year. I'll plan to come to Pittsburgh and do whatever you'd like me to do. But uh, I, I'm just thrilled by this group and look forward to get developing my relationship with many of you further. The final thing I will say, Joe, is we have a tagline for the Family Medicine Education Consortium, and that is we bring people and ideas together to get things done. We are an action-oriented change agent kind of organization. And so what we don't do is a lot of just uh, kind of creating support groups and people, uh, you know, nurture and support one another. We think that's really important, obviously but we're always looking for the action. So what is it that coming together, we might, we might do together that will make a difference, whether at, at the medical school level, the residency level, the community level, uh, and at the self level. So um, I will put that out there for the group. I'm gonna thank everybody for, uh, for joining today. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is a fantastic response. There's clearly um, uh, an interest and within family medicine. And, and Joe, I will be looking to you for guidance about how the FMEC can be most helpful in uh, nurturing, supporting, and encouraging action in this area. Well, and everyone else on this call, you're, you're all leaders. So I, you know, please, all of you step forward and with any suggestions and directions and, and help uh, lead this group, because I think we could do great things to change family medicine. I'm thrilled by how many educators and how many residency education, because it's really, you know, we're just kind of the lights for the next generation. And if we create a tremendous next generation, it's going to force a lot of change in our field. Uh, the Academy of Family Physicians and others who, uh, you know, I mean, we've, we've been in a place where you couldn't even use the word functional medicine and get it CME certified for years. I mean, it's just, it's been a crazy backlash. Uh, against us. And of course, big food and big pharma are not always our friends. Okay, thank you all. Yeah. Take Thanks, care, everybody. Thank you, Larry.